I have a special resource for all of you today. This is a devotional book. It has 365 devotions. This has, again, a verse, a story to read, a prayer to pray, and three study questions, and a place to journal. And we had over 100 different authors who helped us put this book together. And the idea is that there's 365 devotions to help you have a better relationship with King Jesus day by day. In fact, when you get the book, you'll see the, the price tag on the back is $24.95. And for a gift of any size, uh, we will send this book to you because we want everyone to have this book. You'll have the time of your life going through this and you'll have a better relationship with Jesus Christ. It's called Romancing Royalty. And we are in a loving relationship with the King of the universe, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello again and welcome as we lift up Jesus with Pastor Dudley. I'm Michael North. The Christmas season is upon us again and with it comes the usual holiday music we hear everywhere we go. But the music we are looking at today was written a long time ago. It is music that reflects the long wait for those anticipating the coming of the Messiah over 2,000 years ago. Today, Pastor Dudley highlights Bethlehem, the town in which the baby Jesus was born. Dudley's message reminds us that even those today who are looking for and hoping to find Jesus surely will. Let's join Pastor Dudley now as he begins our new series, The Music of Christmas. Today, uh, we start a new series. I can't believe it's December and it's the end of the year. The year has gone by so quickly. Can you believe it? We're going to look at four different words. When you think of Christmas and the meaning of Christmas, the purpose of Christmas, there are four words that I want to highlight. Today's song is O Little Town of Bethlehem. And in your notes, here's the first word that I want to get over into your heart today, and it's the word culmination. The word culmination means the highest or the climactic point of something, especially as attained after a long period of time. Culmination. Now, usually whenever we think of Christmas, we think of a moment in time. We think of that moment when Jesus arrived as a baby. But today, I want to draw your attention that Christmas is more than just a baby being born, that one moment. I want you to see that it was from the very beginning of time that scriptures had pointed to a moment when God would fulfill all of the Old Testament prophecies and all of the Old Testament scriptures concerning that one day he, God, would send a Messiah to and for the nation of Israel. Now the song this week is O Little Town of Bethlehem. It was written by a man who was at one time perhaps the most famous preacher in America in the 1800s a man who actually spoke at the funeral of our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. His name was Phillips Brooks. He had an S on the end of his first name and an S at the end of his last name. You know he struggled with that his whole life, trying to explain that to people. But I want you to write this down. Phillips Brooks, a preacher in 1861, became the pastor of what we know the Holy Trinity Church in Philadelphia, ministering to a congregation throughout the bloody years of the Civil War. 
Brooks, because of his reputation as an orator, was asked to speak at Lincoln's funeral. I have a picture when they were gathered outside the church. Digging deep through his own despair, he found the words that fit the moment. Soon after, he himself, Phillips Brooks, void of energy, he felt exhausted, and I can only imagine, he attempted to take a much needed sabbatical. And so later that year, in the fall of 1865, he left the pulpit to make a journey, write this down, to visit the Holy Land. And on December 24th, Christmas Eve, the year 1865, Phillips Brooks gets on a horse and travels from Jerusalem to Bethlehem to see the place where Jesus was born. And at dusk, a sudden sense of awe fell over Brooks under a clear sky as the first stars just began to emerge. He rode this horse through the Judean hillside into the still, tiny, and remote village called Bethlehem. And the great speaker, the great orator, was all but speechless as he considered the truth that the heavenly king of all the ages was born in such modest surroundings. And there on the streets, almost unchanged since biblical times, Brooks felt as if he were surrounded by the spirit of the first Christmas. Later, when he was reflecting upon that trip, he wrote in 1868, he wrote the poem, which was turned into a Christmas carol that the world has been singing for the last 150 years. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above the deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary, and gathered all above while mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wondering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to men on earth. See, it's almost tied to the Civil War when he saw nothing but peace. And he knows that it comes from the Christ of Bethlehem. The last verse says, O holy child of what city? Bethlehem. Descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born to us today we hear the christmas angels the great glad tidings tell oh come to us abide with us our lord emmanuel well if you look at your bibles in micah chapter 5 verse 2 and i want you to remember this whenever you think about bethlehem that it was prophesied in, in micah chapter 5 verse 2 here it is but you what's the name of the city bethlehem, bethlehem. ephrathah Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you, Bethlehem, will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. And then we learn in verse 4, he will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord and in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they, Israel, will live securely, for then his, God's greatness, will reach where? To the ends of the entire earth. And look at verse 5, it says, And he, the Messiah, will be our what? Our peace. And so we learn all the way back in Micah chapter 5 that we learn the Messiah is going to come from the tribe of Judah particularly this little tiny town called Bethlehem. And from this little tiny town will come the Savior of the world. 
and that this salvation and this peace, although it starts in Bethlehem, will reach to the far corners of this earth. It's prophesied in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, and 700 years later, it happened exactly as it was prophesied because Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 says that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, the culmination of God's plan to redeem the world, and that is what Christmas is all about. Okay, turn your Bibles over to Luke chapter 2. We have the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2. And my question to you this Christmas is, do you see it? Do you realize that this event is the culmination of God's plan throughout the years? Or have you missed it? You know, for thousands of people, they were waiting on the Messiah. And there's always people, and I ask this question, when he arrived, there were some people that missed it altogether. You say, well, how did they miss it? I mean, Jesus can be standing right next to you and you can't see him. He, he finally arrived. They'd been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally he's there, and they missed it. How did they miss it? Well, same way we miss it. We're too busy. We're too preoccupied. Some of us have grown weary in waiting. We think it's never going to happen. But they missed it. And my question to you, have you missed it? Have you forgotten what Christmas is really all about? The Bible tells us a story of a man who did not miss it. He, he understood that this was the culmination of God's plan. His name was Simeon. Everybody say Simeon. Simeon. Look at Luke chapter 2. I want to read through this story. Luke chapter 2, and I'll make a few quick points. Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout, and he was, what's the word? He was waiting. He did not want to miss it. And what was he waiting for? He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Verse 26, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he, Simeon, would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Verse 27, moved by the Spirit, he went where? Into the where? and to the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was the custom of the law required, Simeon, what did he do? He took him. Can you imagine Mary and Joseph? They, this is their first child. You know parents are very protective with their first child. Fourth one, they don't care. <laughs> take him, take him, take him. Keep him as long as you want. Yeah, as long as you want. They walk into the temple courts, it's crowded. And this man named Simeon comes up, and the Bible says Simeon just took him in his arms. And don't forget, he was waiting for the consolation of, 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 of Israel. He was waiting for the one who would fulfill all the Old Testament scriptures. He was waiting for the Messiah. And the Bible says that Simeon just took him in his arms, and he praised God, saying, verse 29, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Verse 30, for my eyes have finally seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people of Israel. Again, the Messiah was for both Jew and Gentile. Now, I want to make four points and make them quickly. Number one, write this down. Those who look for Jesus will find him. Those who are looking for Jesus, you'll find Jesus. It, it, it doesn't matter if you're Simeon 2,000 years ago and you're in a crowded temple full of people, or if you're Phillips Brooks in 1865 riding a horse on Christmas Eve into Bethlehem, or if it's 2,000 years later and you're sitting at Shepherd Church at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning, 
If you're here and you're looking for Jesus, you'll find Jesus. Verse 25 says that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And that word waiting does not mean he's just sitting around doing nothing. The word waiting, write this down, it's a word that means that he was looking intently. I want you to know that God is here. You might not be able to see him, but he's here. And if you would start to search God, search for him, you say, well, I don't really believe God's real. Well, have you ever prayed, God, if you're real, will you reveal yourself to me? And if you will pray that prayer, God, I'm, I have some questions, I have some doubts, I really don't know if you're real or not. Would you reveal yourself to me? Let me tell you, God will reveal himself to you. He'll do it through the sermon, he'll do it through the scriptures, he might do it through one of the songs, but he will speak to you, and let me tell you, once you see him, you'll see him everywhere working in people's lives. Number two, write this down. Number two, my second observation. There are many times the assurance comes before the actuality. In other words, God will tell you something. It's true. It hasn't happened yet. But if he tells you something, you can assure it's going to happen. That's what happened to Simeon in verse 26. He was told that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's what? The Lord's what? The Lord's Christ. And that word is really the word for Messiah. He was told that before you die, Simeon, you are going to see yourself with your own eyes. You will see the Messiah. And he was told that, and once he was told, he believed it. And then he began to search, and in our text, just as, he, as it was revealed to him, the actuality happened after he was assured that it, was ha- that it would happen. The Bible is full of prophecies and promises that belong to you. And when you read those promises, I want you to know that once you read them, you can take assurance that what you read is in fact going to happen. Today, I believe this, uh, you know, we lift up Jesus here at this church. We're here because of Jesus. And the Bible says that if we lift up Jesus, that he will draw all men unto himself. So all I have to do is preach Jesus, and I know that people are gonna get saved. Now, there are people here today in this room, you're not saved yet. You've never given your life to Jesus. If you died right now, you would not go to heaven. There are people here right now. But I know before you even get saved that you're going to get saved. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, because the Bible says if I lift up Jesus, he's going to draw all people unto himself. So all I have to do is preach Jesus, and you're going to get saved. You might not even know it yet, but I am assured in my heart that many people are gonna be saved before they even know they're gonna get saved. The Bible tells us that one day the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return. It has not happened yet. But the Bible says one day that Jesus will return. I am assured before the actuality occurs that one day Jesus will return. Some of you right now, you don't believe that Jesus Christ is going to return because you've not put your faith and trust in what God says. Whenever God says something to you, you can be assured it's going to happen. So as sure as I'm standing right here on this pulpit, one day the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return. So how do you know? Because I've been assured it's going to happen. So I don't believe it. Well, you're going to see it one day. Trust me. I've also been assured that one day, because I have put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I've been assured that one day I'm going to live in heaven forever and ever and ever. You say, how do you know that? Because I, I, I've been assured. I have the assurance of salvation. And one day, not only me and myself, but you, those of you who've put your faith in Jesus Christ, we're all going to be in heaven together. Can someone say amen? amen. There are some, there are some 3,000 promises in the Bible. 
And every single one of them, if you would read them, you would say, well, that hadn't happened yet. Well, it hadn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. The assurance always comes before the actuality. Now, whenever man tells me something, if you tell me something, I don't, don't take this personal, but I don't really believe, believe you. Why is that? Well, because man breaks his word all the time. People tell me stuff all the time. They, people tell me stuff that's not true. In fact, man never keeps his word. That's why the Bible says as a Christian that you're supposed to let your yes be your yes and your no be no. As a Christian, when you say something, you should keep your word. I don't care what the circumstances, if you you say you're going to do something, you you should do it. You make a vow to God, a vow to anything, you need to fulfill that vow. But we break our word. So again, whenever man tells me something, okay, okay, I don't believe it's going to happen, but okay. But when God tells me something, I believe it because God never breaks his word. You see, God was the one who said that the Messiah would come from the tribe of Judah. And he did. God was the one who said that the Messiah would be born of a virgin. And he was. God was the one who said in Micah 5 that this Messiah would come from the little bitty town called Bethlehem. And he came from a little town in Bethlehem. God was the one who said that this Messiah, when he comes, although he was born in Bethlehem, he would be known to the ends of the earth. Here we are in Porter Ranch talking about somebody that was born in little Bethlehem over there. So whatever God's Word says about Jesus being the only way to heaven, the way, the truth, and life, and no one come to the Father except through Him, that's true. Whenever He says that one day Jesus Christ is going to return and the dead in Christ will rise and those of us who are alive will meet Him in the air and we'll go to heaven, that's true. And anyone here who puts his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you can have the assurance of everlasting life. And as we close, as we close, verse uh, point four, write this down. Once you find Jesus, once you meet the Messiah, Jew and Gentile alike, once you find the Messiah, you're then ready to go home. He said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. And the opposite of that is true. Hear me out. If you're here today and you've never met Jesus, you don't know Jesus, you haven't figured out that he's the culmination since God has been planning this from the beginning of the world. If you don't know Jesus, you're not ready to go home. And I'm not talking about just going to heaven. You're not ready to leave here until you know Jesus. He's here. He's here today. And he offers you an invitation today. God knew that we were lost in our own sin, in our own way, in our own mud and mire and decay and sin and sorrow. And he knew that on ourselves and by ourselves that we could never get to heaven. And so God, from the very beginning of time, he sent Jesus Christ into this world to die on a cross so that your sins might be completely forgiven. And I want you to know this and hear me out on this. When God sent Jesus into this world, he did not send Jesus just so he could come to earth. He sent Jesus so he could come to you. He did, not, he did not send Jesus so Jesus could live inside the temple. He wanted Jesus to live inside this temple. And whenever God invades your heart, your sins are forgiven. If you're an outcast, And you think no one cares about you. You come to Jesus. 
At that moment, you become an heir to the throne. Nobodies become somebodies. Those who are poor in spirit become blessed. Those of us that are just human, we receive divine assignments and missions. I ask you, do you see him? Have you missed it? Have you, have you forgot what Christmas is all about? God sending Jesus not just into this world to live in this world, but he sent Jesus to live inside of you. That's the culmination of God's plan. And if you don't know him today, if you do not know peace, and you're living in despair, and you're living under depression, and you're feeling like no one cares about me, and you're living under the weight and the guilt of sin, you need to come to Jesus. Because he'll take that all away. He'll forgive you of your sins, the weight of sin, the guilt of sin. He lets you start all over. He changes you from the inside out, and he will give you what no one else can give you. He will give you peace, peace from within. When the world looks like it's crazy, you're going to be like, that doesn't bother me because I have Jesus Christ within me. And one day when Jesus Christ returns, you'll go with him and you will live in heaven. You have the assurance of everlasting life simply because you've come to Jesus Christ. I have a special resource for all of you today. This is a devotional book. It has 365 devotions. This has, again, a verse, a story to read, a prayer to pray, and three study questions, and a place to journal. And we had over 100 different authors who helped us put this book together. And the idea is that there's 365 devotions to help you have a better relationship with King Jesus day by day. In fact, when you get the book, you'll see the, the price tag on the back is $24.95. And for a gift of any size, uh, we will send this book to you because we want everyone to have this book. You'll have the time of your life going through this and you'll have a better relationship with Jesus Christ. It's called Romancing Royalty. And we are in a loving relationship with the King of the universe, the Lord Jesus Christ. Join us every week for another life-changing message from Pastor Dudley. You can visit us anytime on our website and discover the many resources available there to help you with your daily Christian walk. And while you're there, please consider partnering with us to help support this ministry. Pastor Dudley has a burden to reach the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we can only do that with your financial help. You can also connect daily with Pastor Dudley through many forms of social media. We thank you for being a part of this ministry and invite you to join us again next week at the same time. Remember, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. Jesus.